Hi, it's Mark Marmer from Signature Electric. So I just want to tell you a little story. We started somebody new in the office this, uh, just a couple of weeks ago actually, and he came to me this week and said, I see you guys are installing chargers all over the place. I see that you did a bunch of chargers from Mercedes Benz, and I'm just, I'm just wondering, where are these chargers? How do, how do you find these chargers? Are they free? Do you pay for it? And I started to answer the question and realized that the answer was a little more complex than that. And then it occurred to me that my audience is probably interested in the same kind of thing. So let me give you sort of the, you know, the 101 on charging. So the reason that I started here is this is my driveway and this is my car and this is my charger back here. So what happens for me is that I come home and I plug in my car at the end of the day, whenever I get home, I've got some uh, mileage left on it. I charge it up to whatever level that I want. In the morning I come, I unplug it, and I'm, I'm ready to go. That pretty much is all I need unless I'm going to travel somewhere. But you may not have a charger at home. Uh, you might have not have a car with quite as much range, so you may need to recharge somehow during the day. You may, like I do sometimes, want to go on a trip, and you're interested to find out and make use of these chargers that are public chargers, not necessarily home chargers. So let's let's just see where these chargers are and how they work. So I think the education about moving from gasoline cars to EV charging needed to start somewhere over here. We're used to seeing these gas stations and we've been doing this for almost 100 years. There's like 16,000 of these in Canada. And this is how we figure out where we're going to go to get gasoline. So it wasn't a question about where to get gasoline. It was obvious. They were on every corner. I passed another one on the way up here. But the landscape has changed. For the most part, except for a few uh, the petrocan stations, we're not yet seeing electric vehicle charging in these locations. I'm not sure we ever will see it. This may not be an ideal location. But in the meantime, we made the transition. Now, interestingly, I picked this particular gas station for a reason. It's because right across the street is Fairview Mall. Just, just over here, you would have passed it. If you'd have come down either of these streets, you would have passed Fairview Mall. It takes up this whole corner. And you never would have realized that inside that inside Fairview Mall is a whole variety of electric vehicle charging stations. So we'll go take a look at the charging stations and we'll figure out how, uh, eventually how it is we're going to find those. If you didn't know they were there, how are you going to figure out where they are? Okay, so we're in the parking lot of Fairview Mall and I brought you first to the Tesla charger. So these are specific for Tesla vehicles uh, and they were put in by the manufacturer um, at their expense. So if you're coming here and you want to charge, it's pretty simple. Just push the little button, plug it in kind of the same way as I unplugged it and the car will start charging. This is very close to my house and frankly speaking, I've never used this yet. The reason I don't use it is I mentioned is I have home charging and this is close to my home. But I might use something like this when I was traveling. When Tesla started making cars, they understood that charging and cars were, uh, were not two different things, but they were one thing, and it was important to be able to provide this for clients. And they've really made, done a good job. Even where we're standing now, if I drove about another 20 minutes, I would find two more locations just like this with 20 positions of charger. So they've made quite a substantial investment. Now bear in mind that these are only for um, Tesla vehicles. Uh, we'll, we'll look at other chargers that are for um, uh, other vehicles on the road. I also get this question, the level one, level two, level three question. This is a very common one. We even have a video with level one, level two, level three. So the charger at my house was a level two charger. I mean, it's a, got 220 to it and it's charging at the rate of about 30 or 40 kilometers um, per hour. So it's made for somebody where you're gonna stay for you know, five or six hours, clearly overnight or maybe at a, a hotel or something of that nature. In this case, these are level three chargers and most of the chargers we'll look at uh, while we're traveling are level three chargers. Level threes are meant to recuperate your, uh, the charge much faster. They're a much uh, more expensive charger. They're obviously delivering the energy at a much higher rate so that if you were traveling you maybe could stop for 15 or 20 minutes or half an hour 45 minutes and recover the charge that you needed or if you even needed in the middle of the day 15 minutes might be enough and we'll just take a quick sort of pan around here and you'll get an idea of the size of this today there's only a couple of cars charging the one beside us uh, has uh, just been here for a bit they got something to eat and they're sitting in the car waiting 
This person just pulled up a little while ago. And people tend to, there's another one, a couple sitting off the other side. These people have plugged in their cars and they're going to leave. The other question that comes up from, uh, is about pay, payment. Uh, are these free? Uh, in the case of this particular car, my, my Model S, it, free charging from these Tesla chargers was included in the cost of the car. So I don't exactly consider it to be free. I think I paid for it. We have a Model 3. The Model 3 did not come with free charging. And when I plug in my car, the car knows that it's uh, who it is it's plugging in, and we do actually get billed uh, for the time for the charging. Again, it's not a problem. We don't, most of the time we're using home charging at home. And when we're on the road, if, I, if it costs me 10 or $15 to charge, uh, you know, it's not a problem. I don't mind paying for the fuel, and I don't mind paying for the convenience. So let's go see if we can find this other uh, level three charger that's at Fairview Mall. Okay, so we came around the other side of the mall, a little bit of finding. I checked on one of the apps to see where it is, because I, I checked actually earlier. I knew these were located here. So we have, this is a manufacturer here in Canada, Flow. They're well known for, uh, for uh, EV charging, and they do a very reliable job in terms of the reliability of the charger, something that's very important. So in this case, we have a one level three DC fast charger. So this is a, again, we mentioned for very quick recovery and they happen to put two of the level two chargers in here. So if I worked in the mall and I was gonna be here for five or six hours, this might work out perfectly for me. Or even if I was maybe even staying for three hours or so, uh, maybe having a bite to eat or whatever, and I recovered maybe 100 or 150 kilometers of range, uh, that might almost work for where I wanna go. So I just have to think about what I'm doing. If I want it to be faster, like I was doing over with the Tesla chargers, this is the charger that I would use. So we'll, we'll go up, we'll take a little closer look, and I'll show you functionally how they work, and we'll talk about pricing for a minute. You can get an idea just from looking at the size of this piece of equipment that this is a way more substantial item and providing way more power than we would have seen with the, uh, the level two chargers. Uh, you also see that the cost comes up. Here, it's, that was $1.50 an hour. This is $20 an hour. That being said, in the period of an hour, if I was plugged in here, that would probably be the equivalent of plugging in for seven or eight hours over there. So uh, a big advantage. The other thing is this looks like it's for two vehicles. It's not for two vehicles. It only can serve one vehicle at a time. We have still um, a, a variety of uh, arrangements for plugging in on D at DC. We, have, we saw the Tesla chargers. That's their DC arrangement. And we have what's called Chatamo and CCS. For all intents and purposes, two different types of charging. Uh, cables so depending on what car you have um, most of the bigger manufacturers are putting both on there and then they can serve whatever car uh, is available and in fact even the Tesla has a, uh, a, a an adapter cable that you can buy uh, I don't know that a lot of people buy them but if you're traveling somewhere kind of be, could be handy to have so the system in terms of uh, charging is pretty much the same tap the card authenticating and we're good, it's telling me to, to uh, push the start button. I would pick the correct adapter, plug it into my car, and I'd be on my way. So reliability is important. There's only one of these chargers. If I came all the way over here and hoping to need this charger and found that it wasn't working, that, this would be a very disappointing problem. And the other thing you can see that we have still to grow is where I was over at Tesla, there were three or four cars charging, but there were 20 positions. Here we have only one position. So in time, I think this is gonna grow and I know that some of the manufacturers are putting in multiples. So this is, you know, we're still in an infancy stage with the electric vehicles, but we're in the right direction with this. Okay, so one of the reasons that you might wanna be looking for chargers is you're traveling. Even with a car with fairly long uh, range mileage and you may not need it from day to day, you may need it for traveling. Pretty much every car has some kind of system or is able to adapt to some type of system. Tesla's got a specific system for um, for planning the travel, not just planning the route, but dealing with charging on the way. So let's uh, let's just let's just plan a pretend route. We're going to maybe we'll head to uh, Parliament Hill in Ottawa. So I'll show you how that might work in this particular car. So we can actually do that by voice. Navigate to Parliament Hill in Ottawa. 
Oh, there we go. It's brought that up. We'll select Parliament Hill. And all these red dots are all uh, those Tesla chargers. And it's figuring out what the route's going to be. So let me take a peek. It's got. It's decided that we needed a, a stop on the way. It takes a look at how much mileage the car has on it and decides uh, what we're going to do. So it, it wants you to stop in the supercharger in Belleville. It's trying to have me stop for as little time as possible and still be able to manage the trip. That's the goal of the, the system. So it's asked me to stop for 20 minutes and telling me that when I reach Parliament Hill, I'll have 15% uh, um, left on my battery. So that, and it's giving you the, the total amount of time, four hours and 20 minutes. So you, if the, if the weather was really good and it was summertime, this would be perfectly able to trust this and you could do this. Uh, frankly speaking, when I'm traveling, I would rather, I may stop at a different charger. There are a lot of other chargers that are available. I think I can bring them up here. All these chargers are available. So if I wanted to, I could still stop in Kingston on the way. And it's giving me an indication of, of how far the chargers are from where I am. This type of thing is what most drivers are using. If they're looking for a charger during the day or they're planning a trip, this type of system is, is what they're using. So you can't really talk about uh, electric finding electric vehicle chargers without talking about the apps that are available. There's actually quite a few apps, but I'm just gonna focus on a few so you can get an idea of how it works. Um, I'm, we're looking at here on my laptop, but typically this is something you might look at on your uh, smartphone or even in the car on the screen. So let's search for the charger here at our office, 400 Eston Park, and it found it. There it is on the map. Click on it, and it brings up a nice picture on the left-hand side. So this is the kind of information we're looking for you. For this is just at the um, the back of our shop, and it's telling you you can that we've got a J1772 there, the charge point charger. Tells you the address, phone number if you needed it. How much is it going to cost? And the cost can range from free to any amount. A dollar fifty is not an unusual amount. Um, and there's no charge for the parking there. Sometimes it at least can be in underground parking garages. And it's open all the time. We're, we're welcome. We're happy to have people come by and we can have it sometimes during the day and even in the evenings. It gives you very specific information about what kind of charger it is and that it's shared on a single uh, 32 amp feed, CT4000, a type of, um, it's a J1772. It this will fit every car. And you, once you check in, you can leave all kinds of comments. Somebody was there uh, a while back and left a comment about uh, uh, that it worked fine and it was going to Kitchener. So if it was, say, not working fine, uh, this would be where you might uh, find that information. Because, of course, you're, you're anxious to have it uh, be reliable when you're there. And, and as we scroll out on the map, I'll do this so you can understand that there's a lot of other chargers in the area. Um, just, uh, just even just north of us, uh, um, lots of places to charge, and these uh, these different icons give you an indication of uh, exactly what type of chargers they are. If you click over here, uh, it has a legend for you, and if you wanted to, we have all of the different types selected. But if you just wanted to uh, have a you could toggle them off. And you could pick, uh, I, you know, I only want uh, Tesla superchargers. And it'll bring out the superchargers. There's the ones up in Markville, uh, down in Fairview Mall where we were before, over in Markville. So just to make it easier to be able to find exactly what it is you, you want, depending on the vehicle that you've got. Uh, another one of the very popular ones is Charge Hub. And it works in a very similar way. Uh, again, you can see the, the map here. Uh, we can search for, let's see what's happening at 400 Desta Park. Just to make a comparison here, I found it pretty quickly. It's uh, apparently there's an Esther Park in New Jersey as well, but we'll pick on the one in Markham. And I believe that's us here. And uh, in this case, uh, no picture got uploaded, but uh, the information is there. There's the charge point phone number in case you're needing it. Let's see what it says under complete details. Brings the map up on top, tells you where it is, tells you that it's a, at our office uh, at the back of Unit 1. So they're trying to guide you to be able to find it when you get there. 
kind of a showing you that there's actually two two charging ports available and again it's a dawn 15 hour i don't see any comments here so that gives you an idea that maybe the people that have come have come to us through PlugShare. Uh, another thing that's not exactly the same but very useful is this a uh, better route planner what it's done is it doesn't actually have the information it knows what kind of car i have because i've set it up in my uh in my profile and uh, so it knows what kind of battery i have so it's suggesting that if i were to bring the battery up to 90 percent maybe charging with this charger that i could make it all the way to ottawa and i'd have still have 25 percent left which is entirely possible if the weather was good and, uh, and everything went fine but in the meantime i'm passing by peterborough and uh, a few other chargers here in Perth. So I have some other options for charging along the way, uh, even just at the Tesla chargers. This is just a smattering so you can see how it might work. Uh, again, a lot of the vehicles come with something inside to help you to do this and get you even more information in terms of um, live information from the vehicles. But this is a very popular way that people find it and a, an interesting way for you to be able to see that well, it, we don't see them like we do with the gas stations on the corners. There are a lot of chargers around.